Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hello, my name is Adam McIntyre, and I am here with Pastor Ken Warline, who just finished the first part of the Rise Above series, uh, which is going through the book of 1 Peter. Thank you so much, Pastor Ken, for being here sure. with us today. So uh, we got some good questions in, and the first one uh, is kind of a theology question. Um, they were asking, if Jesus defeated death on the cross, then why is it that we still die? Why is death still a thing? Sure. Well, of course, I guess you could back it up and say, why is evil still a thing? Why is pain still a thing? Why is sin still a thing? Um, because death is just the cumulative uh, pack, packed punch of all of that. Right. At, it, it's the worst right. that life can give us this side of heaven. Well, and I think the answer has to come to borrow some phrasing from smarter theologians than the two of us. Uh, it has to do with the fact that we're living in the already, mm -hmm. not yet, okay. of the gospel. So the already is Christ has come, he's been raised, we're raised to life with him. That has already happened. Right. We've been saved, we've stepped into this living hope, we've been justified. Uh, by our faith through His grace. But the consummation hasn't yet happened. Right. That's the not yet. And so when does that get to happen? Well, in that final day. We don't know when that's going to happen. And Jesus said, you spend your time trying to figure out when that's going to happen because that's going to happen when it happens. Right. And He knows, uh, only the Lord knows when that's going to happen. So we live in this in-between time um, that they, the theologians call the already, not yet. And th so that means that we have these moments of uh, life where we're just shining full of hope and we just almost feel like we can see and taste heaven. Sometimes when you go to a beautiful place, you see a sunset or a mountain range or, or you have a special moment with your spouse or children or something and you just feel like you're just almost there, right. but you're not there. Right. Um, and then you have moments of death and suffering and mm. funerals and pain and you realize, no, we're not there. Mm. Uh, it has already happened that we've been saved, but it hasn't yet happened that we're um, all, all the way there, the, the not yet of the gospel. Right. So we live in this awkward in between time. I love that, the already, but not yet. Like Jesus came and he inaugurated his kingdom. That's right. It's here, it's already here, but it's not yet fully established. That's, right. that's one of the things that we're Well, here that's to do. our job Absolutely. is to help his kingdom be spread here on earth. Absolutely, already, not yet. I love that. And so another question that was given to us was what can we practically do um, to help us persevere through? Um, through our trials, if, mm -hmm. if we're in the midst of that right now and we're trying to cling on to that hope sure. um, that we have in Jesus, what are some practical things that we can do to help us cling on to that hope? Yeah, well, this is kind of exciting because this is actually where we're, we're gonna go right into the next section next Sunday. Okay. And he's going to say, therefore, in light of all the stuff we just talked about today, get your mind in gear. He's, he's going to say, you, you can't just be cavalierly going along and ah, la di da whatever your thoughts are. And, and the, he said, no, 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 you've, you've got to really harness your, your mind and your thoughts. I think one of the best answers to the question that you just raised, Adam, is probably modeled, was modeled by David Chavez in the first illustration I told. Um, the, the blind man and the diabetes and the lungs filling up. And yet he disciplined his mind and he spent hours memorizing God's word mm -hmm. and he would sing his songs of devotion to the Lord. And some of us maybe say, I don't know that I really quite feel like I'm a sing my songs, but you can still be spending time in the word and talking with him and praying and 
communing with him. And I think this is where the, the devotional life takes on a whole new dimension. Right. We tend to, because we're busy American people, and we think ourselves so important that those of us who follow Christ, we say, oh yes, well, I have gotta pack a little devotional time into my already busy list of things to do so I can check that off right. and get onto the stuff that really matters. I think we have to flip that mm -hmm. and say, no, this is the thing that matters. Right. This is what connects me to the not yet is my time with the Lord and getting my mind focused on Him, not on the pain, not on the suffering, not that it's not real, it's very real, sure. but saying, I'm going to step with you, Peter, up to 30,000 feet elevation, and I'm going to try to take that perspective um, that you were trying to give us uh, here in the book. I think that really gives a whole new dimension to the seriousness significance of a meaningful, vibrant devotional life. Absolutely. When you see somebody like we saw in David who lived with such impressive hope and joy and that smile and, and even though he was in pain. Right. The, and I regularly thought to myself, you are a wimp of myself <laughs> and you need to look at him and learn from him um, because he's setting a great example for when we're going through pain Absolutely. and suffering. Absolutely. So having, getting our minds in gear, yeah. as Peter says, and, and uh, gaining that eternal perspective, right. as you mentioned in your sermon, just helps us to, um, I think it even helps with the fear of it as well. The sure. more and more um, we, can, we see the world through the lens of Christ, the more and more our fears of um, going through those trials and even sure. the fear of death um, dissipate, begins to go away. Yeah, well, because... Your brain can't think, you can't focus on two things at the same time. Right. Our brains cannot do that. So I'll either be obsessed with the pain, with the tragedy, with the evil, with the hate, uh, with whatever it is, I'll be obsessed with that and God will therefore necessarily have to shrink way back right. and become very little big, uh, little, while well, these are big. Mm -hmm. Or I can put my mind on the Lord and remember this is not how it ends. This is temporary and let him be magnified as the psalmist would say. And as we magnify him and make him great in our minds, in our hearts, because he already is great, but in our hearts and minds where we're adjusting to this reality, right. then the trials and the pains and the evil and the hate and everything, it becomes smaller. Absolutely. Because our mind can't make two things great at the same time if they're opposites. Absolutely. More and more we focus on the hope that we have in Christ. There it is the more that fear dwindles and goes away. Very beautiful. I'm excited to hear more about that next week as well. Well, me too. I'm excited to, to preach it. It's, it's a very, it's obviously, it's set my soul uh, afire again to be studying it. And uh, so I'm looking forward to it also. Me too. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Ken, for being here with us. And thank you all for tuning in. We will see you all next week. Thanks for joining us for PostScript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.